Today we are going to the uh, one of the important chapter on true bacteria. We have heard about bacteria or we are listening about bacteria in our day to day life also. We are having the problem from bacteria, we are having the some advantage of bacteria in both the cases. We have the uh, experience of bacteria in our environment everywhere. See there are so many microbes as we have discussed in the beginning. In the microbial world, it is a, what is the smallest microbe so far you know? Prion. Prion. It is there in a question paper. Yes, you know the answer. Prion. But the prion and virus and viral, these three categories of organism, it is listed as organism, but there is a controversy whether we consider these are organisms or not because they do not have any cell. Because cell is the unit of life. Without cell, life cannot survive. There is no question of living activity without cell. But neither prion, nor virus, nor virus having cell. So it has no cell, means it cannot exhibit its cellular, means life activities in one sense. But there are certain characters which are very much similar to living organism. We'll discuss later on when we discuss these categories in our later um, part of the courses. But not now. If you believe those are microbes or living organism, then we have to confirm that we have to know that prion is the so far reported lowest form of organism. And what is the largest form of organism, microorganism? Protozoa. Protozoa is the largest form of organism. But this is actually animal, but lower group of animal, lowest form of animal because it is one cell character. Otherwise, animals are multicellular. Anyway, now we know the um, trend of the organism from lowest to um, highest form or the um, largest size of the microbial world. Here our discussion restricted to microbes, not microbe organism like human being or other than microorganism classes. So let us discuss with bacteria here. Uh, the true bacteria we are writing here. Then before that we have to know what is bacterium. See what is bacterium if you want to define, you can define in the light of fungal definition. I told you in practical class, just you have to remember the definition of fungi, you can define so many microbes. In the light of fungal definition we have defined in practical class I think. Uh, then the algae we have this uh, defined, blue green algae also defined and today's practical goods we have defined true bacteria even in practical class. Practical class we will deal with bacteria in details uh, in practical way but here uh, see uh, yet to start a practical I think so. So let us have some discussion on bacteria we what we can define in the light of fungal definition. Then we have to know what is fungus or what are fungi. Um, what are fungi? Sir, fungi are a group, are a group of few bacteria, uh, eukaryotic organisms hmm. uh, having uh, chitin cellulose or hemicellulosic cell wall hmm. lacking chlorophyll hmm. and are saprophytic in the tissue. Anyway, uh, who can define it according to Alexopoulos to some extent? Alexopoulos given the definition of fungi. Huh? Can you define? Hmm? What are fungi? In any clear, now we define fungi. Now, in the light of that definition, we can define bacteria. If, the, if you define bacteria that way, see what we have seen in case of fungal definition. This is you can your then <coughs> ininucleated then multicellular spore bearing a chlorophyllous hmm? microorganism which generally produce sexual and asexual means sexual and asexual and brands <coughs> and filamenta, is not it? Somatic is surrounded by cell wall. Then cell wall contains cellulose and chitin. You know, these, these are the characters of fungi. When you go and comparing with this uh, bacteria then, bacteria prokaryote. Is not it? Bacteria. Then it is also ininucleated. 
they also, but this is unicellular and this is it produces endospore not a spore that we observe in case of fungal group it is also a chlorophyllus of course and this produce asexual means and it is non filamentous and it has cell wall and it has peptidoglycan see now the in the light of um, fungal definition we are defining bacteria now in a very simpler way we did nothing actually we have replaced three words that we are getting in the fungal definition and thus we are defining bacteria now how can we define bacteria bacteria are procreatic immunocleated unicellular endospore forming achlorophyllous microorganisms which generally reproduce asexually and, and who is non filamentous somatic structure surrounded by cell wall containing peptidoglycan see we did nothing only we are replacing few words in the fungal definition and we have got the definition of bacteria in this way you can define so many microbes see now this is not the end what characters that we have listed here to designate true bacteria to represent true bacteria this is not the end you can add more and more even in case of fungal definition also all this character listed here this is not the end you can add more and more but these are the very very basic character associated with this group which are very common exceptions are there it is not like that always true bacteria having all this character it is not like that fungal groups always having this character exceptions are variations are there that variations also you have to know what variations we have what exceptions we have let us see here say from this definition now but both, both group has been defined now now you, you are in a position to differentiate between these two group what is the distinction between or difference differentiation between fungi and bacteria or true bacteria now we can write from this list what way they differ what way they similar similarities also we are knowing and the similarities also we are knowing also we have learned at least you can say what is the basic characters of bacteria if anybody asks right short notes on bacteria without knowing anything from the definition itself you can write something it is better to write something without writing anything isn't it and you can elaborate it although you can write it one para you can write many para many pages even if you know each and every word you can go on explaining it in procreatic behavior you know procreate a new career having so many points not only one point one basic character we know it has nuclear membrane in case of eukaryote in case of prokaryote it is lacking nuclear membrane but besides this so many traits you have answered this question in a biology what is the differences between prokaryote and eukaryote you can add those character also here is it these additional things you can incorporate like ununucleated but you know the ununucleated concern one nucleus in one cell in biological system or the cellular organism we will find even one cell may have more than one nucleus a multi nucleated condition this is also there variations are there you can cite example what what way it is formed and why it is formed in which situation it is formed if you have that knowledge you can add on that the unicellular although this bacteria let us see in case of bacteria bacteria is unicellular normally 99.99 cases true bacteria are unicellular we have multicellular bacteria also exceptional case what is that exception exceptions we have multicellular character see example is actinomyces actinomyces actinomycetes or actinomycetes See, this is the group if you do not know anything at least you can name the groups which represent filamentous or multicellular bacteria this is not the common trait common character actinomyces represent filamentous bacteria or multicellular bacteria and this actinomyces specifically you can cite one example say streptomyces 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 species i am writing species name streptomyces species it represent the multicellular bacteria it does not represent the two characters of bacteria two character of bacteria means you bacteria having unicellular character but it is multicellular and also it is filamentous bacteria because it looks filament but normally true bacteria non filamentous type and this actinomyces you know you have studied in biology i i i i think so as fungus and really so actinomyces actually fungus 
in a sense because it is filamentous in nature it produces spore like fungal group it produces conidia conidia spore bacteria never produce conidia conidia spore bacteria never produce filaments bacteria ne never produce fungal hypha that we have observed hypha mycelium like this it is non filamentous non spore former that we observe in typical fungal group then that is it should be fungi then but these are considered as bacteria that chapter i will deal with later on but just this moment i i can tell you why actinomyces is considered as bacterium likewise why blurgin algae considered as bacterium that answer we have got in practical class i think so even being algae blurgin algae now considered as bacteria and name of the bacterium given as cyanobacterium or cyanobacteria the group is known as cyanobacteria including uh, uh, to include the blurgin algae along with bacteria we call them as cyanobacteria is a very uh, specific term nowadays used to include blugin algae but this is uh, blugin algae actually is algae but why blugin algae considered as bacteria that answer already you have discussed i think in practical class why blugin algae considered as bacteria not as algae because of this character if you see the characters of blugin algae you will find it is a prokaryotic in nature it cell wall having peptidoglycan it reproduces a binary fashion in a sexual means norm normally it is normally unicellular multicellular also there but in case of blue green algal group but normally it is unicellular so there are so many ways and it form um, colonies normally on, on the surface of the um, media so if you see the blue green algae it is very much close proximity to bacteria rather than algae itself likewise say now bacteria that we are writing here see your actinomyces why even being fungal types it is considered as bacterium because it has close proximity to bacteria actinomyces is a prokaryote fungi eukaryote the very nuclear behavior is different and cell wall composition is peptidoglycan not cellulose and chitin and reproduction also binary fission majority cases in this way if you see you will, you will get we will discuss these things later on why actinomyces is considered as bacteria see if you consider actinomyces as bacteria then you are to say there are certain group of bacteria which are filamentous this is the example you cite example of bacteria which is multicellular this is the example the bacteria which is producing spores like fungi like conidia this is the example but these are all exceptions these are not the common trait common character of bacteria it cannot represent it is not representing two bacteria means u bacteria these are exceptional cases or you can say related bacteria we are using another term related bacteria so now see from this we have got an idea that bacteria like this bacteria should have this character in each case the endospore it produces endospore not spore that we observe in case of fungal group endo means inside spore means spore spores develop inside the cell because it is unicellular in nature the spore develop this way if you see this is the bacterial cell the spore develop here in this way or it may develop any point any end this end or this end but there will be only one spore in one cell not more than one and that too develop in three uh, sides either in the intracellular position or terminal end either any terminal end this way you will find spore this is a very common character endospore former but not all bacteria are producing endospore there are certain groups only producing endospore and normally um, majority cases you will find non spore former bacteria um, develop a spore endospore only when it needs into uh, defend certain um, stimuli or uh, adverse condition very high temperature very low temperature this is defense mechanism offered by the bacterial group for the production of endospore otherwise it is not producing any endospore then see non filament it is a, a sexual reproduction and it is for um, uh, binary fission by means to fission means division and this is vegetative means of reproduction what is in scenario here reproduction will deal with later on detail but from this definition i am describing this thing it produces through binary fission if you consider this is the bacterial cell it divides into two part equal half the production of the septum this is known as septum septum from and from these two progeny develop from one to two again two develop in this way you know in every 20 minutes it can duplicate its number if this is this scenario 
you can imagine within 24 hours how many numbers of cells it can produce billion trillions of cells that is why fungi uh, the bacteria can reproduce the very very faster uh, than any organism like fungi and all so now it produces this way this is a vegetative means of reproduction because only vegetative organ involved no spores involved but this is the basic um, mode of reproduction but other means and ways also there we will discuss a little bit later then it, it has cell wall now see this is the one of the uh, common characters of bacterial group true bacterial group it has cell wall but we have the example of wallless bacterium there is an question given example of wallless bacterium bacteria which are lacking cell wall the bacteria lacking cell wall we can name one group cell wall less bacterium which are known as molecules in one word we can say molecules without going into details you can say molecules represent the wallless bacteria this group of bacteria they do not have any wall or cell wall under molecules specific example we have you can say molecules we have spiroplasma we have say mycoplasma we have phytoplasma <coughs> these two three names spiroplasma mycoplasma phytoplasma these are the example of wallless bacteria they do not have cell wall since they do not have cell wall they do not have any definite shape because cell wall is the responsible for definite shape of the organism they are pleomorphic in nature so this these are not the actual or u bacteria these are related bacteria because of this character so these are exceptions we have and then cell wall composition peptidoglycan or mucopeptide this is the safe composition of the bacterial cell wall all bacteria are related bacteria or true bacteria all are having mucopeptide or peptidoglycan in their cell wall so now these are these characteristic features of bacteria from the definition of fungal group we are defining bacteria now and we have got all this character it has some additional characters also now we are coming to this two bacteria now with this background see uh, we can now what is bacterium that we have got in now see bacteria everywhere you'll be surprised to know except two places <coughs> you will find everywhere bacteria these two places are deep rock strata and volcano and these two except these two places you will find bacteria everywhere you can find any place where bacteria absent only these two places so it is a wide habitation and wide environmental condition wide range of environmental condition means very very high temperature very very low temperature high salt condition or low salt condition whatever it may be and the bacteria present everywhere and if you think of yourself you'll be surprised to know we are harboring bacteria everywhere almost all the organs one day i told you even you see if you examine your hands palm skin you will find presence of organism if you examine your hands normally you will find one group of organism which are staphylococcus is the phylococcus very much prevalent in the palm surface here and it's the phylococcus causing concern for the human system sometimes it's the phylococcus aureus hmm? causing um, some problems in the sore throat or something like that and but anyway now the the bacteria everywhere and the uh, soil water air this room also having so many bacteria but it's not visible but we are here you see the fun in nature we are living with microbes in everywhere but we are surviving because we are making friendship with them if you um, do the practice you can even live with the enemy also it depends on you what you are cooperating but this is the thing but microbes normally and um, those are having in our environment not so harmful that is why we are surviving sometimes it's like uh, you know this uh, pathogenic form then we do suffer now what disease that is now causing concern dengue dengue fever what is the causal organism of dengue hmm? hmm? dengue is a causal organism bacterium fungus nematode protozoa hmm? Yeah. 
Then another disease, other, other than dengue, that is encephalitis. What is the cause of encephalitis? Did you suffer from encephalitis? Anybody? No, they should not. Encephalitis, the dreaded disease now. Encephalitis as well as dengue. Encephalitis caused by virus. And you know this virus, let me tell you one thing here. Why uh, this is a concern for us, particularly this is caused by viral group? We have to know about that. Because against virus till that we do not have any medicine. This is the saddest part in medical science. In bacteria we have to some extent antibiotic, we can use antibiotic against um, bacterial disease because it is effective against bacteria. But till that we do not have chemical which are effective against virus which can kill it. Still research is on, but we are not getting it. And whatever measures we are taking, it is all preventive measures. Preventive measure, you know, so that we can prevent the healthy person, so that he or she cannot come in contact with the virus particle or viral or agent. If it comes and cause disease, we cannot do anything. We will be mere spectators only. Because whatever virus one, virus will do that. We cannot prevent it. And you will complete its life cycle or um, cycle whatever you want and damage cost to the individual, whether the plants, whether the animal. This is the scenario. What about pox virus? We have vaccine. Is it the vaccination is there? The vaccine, what is vaccine? Vaccine is a preventive measure. Vaccine given to the healthy individual or patient who is already suffered from pox? Is there any utility of giving vaccination or vaccine to the already affected person? No. Did you um, hear that way? Or that the vaccine given or any preventive measure given to the infected person? It is given to the healthy person because these are preventive measures. Because you know the prevention is better than cure, that is well and good. But even sometimes infection cause, damage cause to the individual, we try to recover the patient through treatment. But there is no treatment of viral diseases in true sense, I tell you. Why? But it is very difficult to explain here, but one thing I must tell you here. See, you know, how virus causing concern or infection to the human system or animal system, it is going to deeper and deeper to the cell and integrated with the DNA or chromosome of the individual. And under host machinery, synthetic machinery occupied by the, controlled by the viral group. It will direct the synthetic machinery for synthesis of the virus particle, not the, the particles of the host system, either the plants or whether it is animal. This is the scenario, or this is the situation. In that case, once it causes infection, when it starts multiplying in the host system, how can you kill it? Because it is very much intimately integrated to the host genome. You cannot separate it. You cannot kill it that way. This is the situation now. But in case of bacteria and all, this because it's independent of replication is there, multiplication is there, you can kill it specifically without doing much harm to the cell. That is there. But that is the actual reason of uh, not getting actual drugs, which are very much effective in the viral um, agents and all. But anyway, now this, uh, this if you think about this, uh, regarding bacteria present everywhere, and I, we are the cosmopolitan habitats it has. You know this bacteria in the size and all. Now this is the, the uh, typical drawings of sketch of bacterial cell. It's like this. Or let's say one bacterium that are showing rock separate bacterium, showing in different parts. The rock separate bacterium. See, it has different parts. It has um, appendages also. Appendix part. See. Uh, it has this cell wall and this cell wall, above this cell wall it is a one structure, it is known as capsule, it has capsule, one cover is there and this is cell wall then cell membrane, these are its layers that we observe and in the, along, in the cell wall or the capsule, above the cas capsule you will find some highlight -like projection which are known as flagella, it has flagella and it is arising out from the inner parts of the cell membrane and it has shorter than this is a flagella there is a fimbri also there one group then pili also there pili or pilas these are the some hair like projection that are rising out from the bacterial cell now it has some mesosome these are showing mesosome one organelles 
You know the cellular organism having organelles and inclusion bodies, these two things. Organelles are living smaller organ that are present inside the cell, organelles. And these are living in nature. And inclusion bodies, non-living thing. These are the, in the cytoplasm in the cellular organism having all these organelles. Now the mesosomes is a living one, this is a mesosome. Mesosomes are there. Uh, mm, then the nucleoid is, is, although it is nucleus written, actually it, it, it should be nucleoid. It is not the true nucleus because the nucleus having no nuclear membrane and it takes any shape. Sometimes spherical type, some star separate, some pistol separate, and there are many shapes. So the nucleoid, uh, then intercellular uh, inclusion bodies, then ribosomes. The, uh, many other um, organelles present here, just the depiction of the rod separate bacterium, unicellular rod separate bacterium, showing its different part. See, after giving the imagination of this bacterium in your mind, say, let us say something about bacteria. Uh, water bacteria, but the bacteria that definition we have described here, in one line it is here, typically unicellular procreative microscopic organism. Very, very ordinary way you can define bacteria that way also. Okay. Then it includes the two bacteria, the U bacteria, if you call the bacteria as a whole, and related organisms, I mean related bacteria, these are archibacteria, blue green algae, which are known as cyanobacteria or oxyphotobacteria. Hmm? Mycoplasma, rickettsia, and chlamydia. These are related bacteria we have. Now, these bacteria are reproduced by simple binary fission that we have described. And nutritional processes are very diverse. The what way they are getting their nutrition. And many can thrive in both oxygen rich and oxygen free environment. The nutritional categories we have, we will discuss later on, but it has diverse nutritional behavior. And the basic nutritional behavior we can classify in different way. That will deal with a bit later. Also, it can grow in an oxygen rich environment or oxygen free environment. It means without oxygen, that also it can survive. But growth occurs over a wide range of temperatures. Then temperature requirement also varies. Accordingly, we are having different categories of microbes or the bacteria. And as a neutral pH. Hmm? Normally, uh, it uh, grows in a neutral pH, but we have sacro and there's, um, uh, alkali files or acidophiles on the basis of the acidic in nature or <coughs> basic in nature. But normally, it uh, grows in a neutral pH. And of course, in almost every terrestrial and aquatic environment. On the land surface as well as in the aquatic environment, you will find the presence of the bacterium. See, general morphology of the true bacteria that are coming to that. But before that, let us see. Now, bacteria are not visible to the human naked eye. But very uh, latest information that we have, two bacteria already reported. Which are known as giant bacteria, which are visible to the human naked eye. Very interesting to know. Now, write the name, these two bacteria here. See, Epilopisicum fichalsoni. Epilopisicum fichalsoni. That bacterium, you know, 80 micrometer breadth. and 200 micrometer length. And this bacterium discovered in 1991 by Fischelson and his groups. This is a giant bacteria that is visible to human naked eye because size is 80 micrometer. 80 micrometer and 200 micrometer length. Now this is visible. One more bacterium we have. Okay, now second one, Thio margarita. Namibiensis. Th 
Thayo Margarita, not Margarita, huh? Thayo Margarita Nami BNC. It is 750 millimeter, not nanometer. And this is a spherical archibacteria. This is archibacteria. And it is very visible to the unaided eye. Without microscope, you can see. This is a very big bacteria that has been found out in 1997. And see, very bottom part of sea, on the bottom of the sea, it has been found. Very, very oldest bacteria. And these are visible to the human naked. These are giant bacteria. These are exceptional case, actually. Very, very extraordinary environment that has been found out. Okay, now coming to this general morphology of the true bacteria. True bacteria is strictly unicellular and solitary. Normally, it present without having any group. In some forms, of course, sometimes it forms groups of cells embedded in a mucilaginous layer. Groupings also they form groups sometimes. And that groups, I think we have discussed in practical class, what way they form groups. It's a very peculiar scenery or um, the situation we observe, bacteria present in groups. They form certain association that is also there. Now see, uh, regarding groupings, uh, you know, the bacteria form certain groups. In practical class, we are going to see these things under microscope. And there are certain uh, groups that are making by the bacterial groups like coccospid bacteria. When bacteria, without having any groups, there is no micrococcus. When in pairs, there is no diplococcus. When four numbers, there is no tetra. Tetra means four, as you know. Then the eight, it is also sarsina or octad or octococcus or octococci. Octad means eight. And streptococcus, strepto means sane. It, is, it, it forms certain sane like session. And staphylococcus, ste means A, a not E. Huh? Staphylococcus in like a bunch of crap. These are groupings of bacterial group. Always uh, you have to look for under microscope for this association. What way they form. And it's having its own identity. Even it will identify on the basis of the grouping pattern. Okay? If you find this streptococcus, as for example, lactobacillus. Lactobacillus, normally you will find in streptococcus form. Uh, streptobacillus form means it is chain form. Now see, this is in case of coccus separate bacteria. Uh, before that, you have to see the shape. No? See, the morphology, if you see, it has coccus sepate, sometimes basiliform, sometimes coma sepate, sometimes spirillum, sometimes filaments, sometimes stock sepate. Sometimes bulbous type like this. These are the shape of bacteria. This is known as coccus. This is bacillus. This is vibrio. This is spirillum or spirilla. This is actinomyces. This is stock and this is bulb type. These are the common shape of bacteria. Coccus, bacillus, vibrio, spirillum, actinomyces, stock and bulb. In case of coccus, it is spherical. In case of bacillus, it is rod shape, rod. It is known as rod. This is spherical. It is there in your hand out, I think so. Then it is a comma, this is spiral, and this is filament. These are common term, filamentous type. These are stock and bulb. Now, these are the common shape of bacteria. But among these, these two are very common. Coccus and bacilliform, very, very common. And vibrio spirillum and actinomyces, these are intermediary type in between. And stock and bulb type, these are very, very rare. Stock bacteria also known as prosthicate type, prosthicate. Stock bacteria also known as prosthicate. It is not there in your handout. 
prosticate type bacteria. Prosticate, prosticate means toxic type bacteria. See, these are common shape of or morphology of bacteria. Hmm? And uh, now, see, these bacteria forming certain groups, the association, these are the groupings in case of Cocca separate bacteria. Oh, these, these are the shapes already written here. See, here you can write this Cocca separate bacteria as prosticate bacteria. One stock is there. It's a bulbous type bacteria, bath stepped or bulbous type bacteria, budded one or bulb type bacteria. Same thing. These are the common shape of bacteria. Now see groupings of bacteria. If you see groupings, is another criteria. Groups you have to know because bacteria normally form certain groups, as you have seen, Micrococcus, Diplococcus, and so and so. And basically, form having three categories only. In bacilli form bacteria, you will find microbacillus. Then diplobacillus and streptobacillus. These are groupings of bacilli form type. Normally, coccus and bacilli form showing certain groupings. Otherwise, others are solitary in a state. Okay. You have to know some terminology used regarding coccus as well as bacilli form type. Microbacillus is only one bacterium cell, diplobacillus two bacterial cell, and estrotobacillus chain of bacterial cell. Other form not available. These, these other form that we have seen in case of coccus separate bacteria, absent in case of bacilli form. See, size of bacteria, this, this is very, very important you have to remember. Bacteria shows get variation in size. Some bacteria measures as large as 80 micrometer and length, others as small as 0.2 micrometer. This is the smallest size of bacteria having the size 0.2 micrometer. The largest one that we have just mentioned, the largest one is 750 millimeter also, but this is a very exceptional case, but average is 80 micrometer. 750 millimeter that we have described is a very, very exceptional situation, exceptional example. Otherwise, on an average, this is the range. And average size of bacilli from bacterium 0.2 micrometer, because they are cocker effect, and 1.5 micrometer in diameter, and 3, micro, 3 to 5 micrometer in length. This is average. And diameter by micrococcus is 0.5 micrometer. These are only some average size of the bacteria that we observe in nature or here and there. Okay, then stacks of typical bacterial cell. We will deal with this in the next class, not now.